Welcome back to Hard Draw Unbox. We've got another build video for you today. This one is a pretty important one because I'll be updating my test system with a suite of new hardware to use for all sorts of benchmarking in the future. It's obviously quite important to keep our test systems up to date with the latest hardware, and this build will get me ready for all the action that's to come in 2019. So you might have seen on the channel previously my Core i7 8700K test rig, which is my main Intel test system and the PC I use for all game testing. I also have a Ryzen system kitted out with a Ryzen 7 and 2700X, but considering the 8700K is faster for gaming, it tends to get the first crack at most major titles. Anyway, this video will serve a number of purposes. Firstly, you get to see a cool build process, which is always kind of neat, but more importantly, it serves as a good reference point so you guys can come back and refresh yourself on what is in my test system whenever we use it for future benchmark videos. We're also going to see how this combination of components we have here handles Core i9 9900K overclocking because we know the chip is power hungry and runs hot under full load. And yes, the key component of this build is the Core i9 9900K, which will be replacing the Core i7-8700K in the previous build. We still think the 8700K is better value for most people after a high-end gaming system. In a lot of games, it's just as fast as the 9900K, but costs $160 less. But there's no denying the 9900K is the overall fastest consumer desktop CPU on the market. So I'm upgrading to it in preparation for next year. In case you're wondering, we don't have retail packaging for the 9900K here because this CPU was sent to us by Intel. And with engineering samples or review samples, this is how they come packaged in these little sealed black boxes. So that's what you're wondering. That is, that is our 9900K right there. For our 8700K test system, we used a Gigabyte Z370 motherboard, and this time around, we've gone with Gigabyte once again. The company has really stepped up their game with their Z390 lineup, offering basically the best motherboards in a number of price categories, thanks to their high-end VRM designs that are suitable for unleashing the full power of an overclocked Core i9-9900K. The motherboard that we have here, and this is quite a heavy box, this is the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Master. So this is right up near the top of Gigabyte Z390 lineup. It's a $300 US motherboard thereabouts, so you'd expect it to handle the 9900K overclocked, and it does, thanks to a proper 12-phase V-Core VRM. Steve's already done a bunch of testing with this motherboard, so you can go back and check that out if you want more information on how it performs compared to some of the other high-end Z370 and Z390 boards. But needless to say, it's one of the best Z390 boards on the market. It'll be right at home in our new test system. So thanks to Gigabyte for providing that one. The other key thing for this build is the cooler. The 9900K runs hot and we need something pretty capable to get the most out of the CPU. So for this build, we're gonna try out the new H115i Platinum here, the new AIO cooler from Corsair that includes, I guess, a bunch more RGB lighting. Really don't need the RGB lighting for the build, but it might look cool. More importantly, I'm interested to see how this new 280 millimeter closed loop cooler will handle the 9900K overclocked. We'll get back to you guys on that after the build is complete. The rest of the stuff is pretty standard for our test systems for memory down here. Actually, it's over on this side. We have our 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 at 3000 CL16 speeds, dual channel kit. And over here, we also have a Corsair Force LE200. This is a 240 gig capacity model. This is just a basic boot drive. We have separate drives for storing benchmark apps and all that sort of thing. So we don't need anything crazy from those two components. For the power supply, you've seen it up here, the Corsair RM850X. We've used that in our previous test system and we'll use it again here because it's perfect for the sort of testing we do. And of course the modular design makes it easy to work with. And then for the case, it's not up on the table here, but we asked Corsair to provide whatever sort of case they felt like and they sent over a Carbide 275R. Don't need anything fancy, so we'll see what that case is like. The GPU, it's probably the least necessary part as that's the thing that gets swapped out the most often in our test system. And for this build, just for the sake of it, I've decided to put in the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Founders Edition. This is a card that I have literally never used before. It's just been sitting on a shelf ready to be used for something. So I figured I should probably make sure it actually works. Um, we we'll use it for this build. Anyway, time to put the system together, get ready for that awesome build music from Lakey and I'll see you on the other side.
Now built the system is here beside me and I reckon for a test system it looks pretty good. Uh, I guess for now that is. Um, these sort of things can get pretty messy after a bit of usage, you know, swapping things in and out, messing around with SSDs and all that sort of thing. The Corsair H115i Platinum is definitely the star of the show, the new RGB effects not only with the fans but also the pump block I reckon look awesome. With the previous Pro models I think you only got one RGB LED on the pump but that's now up to 16 with the Platinum and I think that really shows. The Aorus Master also has a few nice RGB effects on it similar to the last board I used from them in my test system. However, I was a bit surprised the motherboard shipped with Gigabyte's older BIOS design on it by default. Gigabyte has done some work to improve their BIOS layout, but you'll only get that if you upgrade the BIOS to version F5 or higher, at least with my unit that I've got here. Also a quick word on the case, the Corsair Carbide 275R. This is one of Corsair's more mid-range cases and the one Corsair sent out is the acrylic side panel version as opposed to the tempered glass version. I actually prefer the acrylic side panel for this test system because most of the time the side panel will be removed and the glass version is more likely to break. However, the hex key screws that are around the edges and I guess corners here, they keep the side panel are pretty annoying. Definitely would have preferred something more like a uh, tool's thumb screws or something like that. I'm also not sure why the acrylic version doesn't come with a top dust filter while the tempered glass version does. I wouldn't have thought they would have uh, distinguished between the two models there, but certainly they have. So I think for most people that are buying this case, I'd probably go for the tempered glass version instead of the acrylic version. But again, I like the acrylic just for my use case here. Aside from that, it's a pretty easy case to work with. There's plenty of room on the reverse side for cable management. All the holes are in the right places. Getting the 280mm radiator in the front as well, no sweat. Uh, you can put that up to a 360mm radiator in there if you want to. And I guess I also love the case in white. I reckon it looks pretty good. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about performance. One of the key goals for this build was to overclock the Core i9-9900K to the maximum and then see how it would go in terms of voltages and especially temperatures on the Corsair H115i Platinum. I wasn't 100% sure whether a 280mm closed loop cooler would suffice for an overclocked 8-core Intel space heater, but it turns out it's actually pretty decent. So here's the basics of what I achieved. I pushed the Core i9-9900K to a 5 GHz all-core overclock and set the voltage to 1.31 volts V-core with Gigabyte's turbo load line calibration setting, which does a great job of managing V-core droop. 1.31 volts is a little lower than Steve achieved with his 9900K sample, so I guess we're off to a great start there. This overclock was validated in our standard one-hour blender stress test. If it passes that, it's good to go for pretty much everything. Temperatures at the end of the run were sitting at 89 degrees Celsius from a 24 degrees Celsius ambient. So that's a very respectable result from a 280mm closed loop cooler. Uh, yeah, 89 degrees is still quite hot, but Corsair's smaller H100i Pro was basically maxed out on Steve's 9900K test system at 5 gigahertz, whereas the H159 Platinum here is actually capable of cooling the 9900K with this sort of overclock. It's also worth mentioning that Steve only managed to shave off a few degrees from this result with a 360 millimeter open loop. So overall, very happy with this cooler and the performance here. The one thing I will say is the cooler isn't particularly quiet at these temperatures. Using the bounce mode for the fans, it decided to push up to around 1700 RPM under full load, which produced moderate noise levels. The cooler is much quieter under less intensive loads such as gaming, and it's basically silent at idle, but you can tell Blender on a 5 gigahertz 9900K is stressing this cooler out pretty hard. Still, I'd give it a pass overall, and there certainly won't be any need to upgrade to a larger cooler for this test system. I'm also quite pleased at the overall size of the build. Um, I last test system in the Be Quiet Dark Base 700 was a bit of a beast in terms of its size and weight. This new build is much more compact, which is better for my office setup. Bit of an unexpected bonus there. Anyway, that's it for this build video. In the near future, if you're wondering what I mean when I say I've used my Core i9 9900K test rig, this is it right here. As always, you can subscribe for more hardware unbox videos. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord chat and monthly live streams, and I'll catch you in the next one.